Howdy folks. What we're going to do in this lesson is we're going to start talking about the graphs of market structures. Now, uh, it can be very mathematical and that's, uh, you probably might have gotten that indication when you saw the word graphs and I understand that a lot of people get a little frustrated with graphs but trust me when I say that graphs are the best way or in my opinion the best way to understand the relationships among uh, market structures and, and their similarities and their differences. Um, what I want to do real quick is I want to review a mathematical concept with you that um, you may be strong in or maybe you're not so strong in. If you're really strong in it, maybe just skip this part of the video, but it might interest you anyways. What I want to talk about is the mathematical nature of calculating an average. Uh, so an average is, you know, you take a bunch of numbers and then divide by however many numbers that you have. So, you know, like if you have, you know, uh, 7 and 3 uh, and 6 uh, and, I don't know, uh, 4, okay? And now this is four numbers, right? And so we're going to divide by 4. And so 7 plus 3, that's 10, plus 6 is 16, plus 4 is uh, 20. So this is 20 divided by 4, and so the average of these four numbers is 5. Uh, I'm sure you're fine with that. That's not what I wanted to review. What I want to review is the idea of what happens to the average when you add more numbers. What if I were to do another average with the same numbers, 7 plus 3 plus 6 plus 4, and I'm curious to know, obviously, I'm going to add one more number, so obviously I'm going to divide by 5, and here's what I'm curious to know. But if you do another average, but you only add one more number, the next number you add, what's going to, or when you add another number, what's going to happen to the previous average that you had? And here's the thing. One of three things is going to happen to, to your new average. Your new average is either going to be larger than your previous average or it'll be the same as your previous average or it'll be smaller than your previous average. And I want you, what I want you to understand here is you can predict that answer based on the nature of this number that you are adding in. And here's the basic idea. If the number that you put here, if the next number that you average in is larger than, than your previous average, you know, with just the four numbers, if the number you add in is larger than this, then your average is now going to be larger. If the number you put here is the same as this number, then the average is going to be the same. And if the number you put here is smaller than the previous average, then your new average is going to be smaller. Now that may seem like very logical, but you'd be amazed at how many people don't understand this basic mathematical concept of averages. And it is an important mathematical concept for what we are about to learn in terms of the graphs of market structures. So I'm going to prove this to you here real quick, okay? I'm going to go ahead and put a 10 in here. So this number is larger than our previous average, right? So. Uh, this was 20, now we're going to add 10, that's now 30, and now 30 divided by 5 is 6. And so you can see now that because the next number added on was larger, our average went up. Okay, all right, now let's say that we're going to put in a 5. We're going to put in a number that is equal to our previous average. Well, 7 and 3 16, uh, makes 10, then 16, then 4 is 20, plus 5 is 25, and 25 divided by 5 is 5. And so if we put the same number in, then we wind up with the same average. But if we put in a number that is smaller, for example, uh, let's put in, uh, I don't know, 4, okay? Uh, we're going to get a decimal now, and I really didn't want that to happen, but that's what's happening here. So we got a 20. 20 plus 4 is 24. 24 divided by 5. So we're going to put 24 divided by 5. And 24 divided by 5 is 4.8. And 4.8 is smaller than 5. 
So it's important that you understand that when you add in another number into an average, if that new number that you're adding in is smaller than your previous average, then your, then your average will go down. If it's the same, the average will stay the same, and if it's larger, then the average will go up. All right, the next thing that you're going to need to understand in order to understand the graphs of market structures is you're going to need to understand the scale of and, and the units of the coordinate plane we're going to use to understand these graphs. Now, the good news is we're only going to be using the positive portion of the coordinate plane. We're only going to be using quadrant one. And so here is the horizontal axis, which is the quantity axis. So this is representing the quantity that is produced or purchased, produced by suppliers, purchased by demanders. Okay. Uh, this is basically a supply and, you know, it's the equivalent of a supply and demand graph, only instead of putting price uh, on the vertical axis, we're putting dollars per quantity, okay? And what I mean by dollars per quantity is, isn't that what price is? Isn't price, when you buy something, you go to the store and you say, hey, what's the price of that item. What's the price of these shirts? I want to buy a few of these shirts. Okay. And if they tell you that the price is uh, $17 for one shirt, what we're saying is that that's $17 for every one shirt. And so the price is uh, the amount of dollars that you have to pay for every one shirt. If you decide that you're going to buy three shirts, the price so three, three times 17, that's you know, 51, right? But the price is not $51, right? That is the overall price, or that's the overall, uh, you know, that's what the number is going to be in your receipt, okay? That's the revenue that is earned by the business. But the price is not $51 because the price is a dollars per unit measure. And so... If we want to know what the price is, if you're paying out $51, we would have to divide the 51 by the quantity that you purchased, which was three, which is now once again $17. And so um, this, the scale of, this, uh, gr of these graphs of the coordinate plane that we're using, the scale is, is going to be dollars per unit. And that's good because... Uh, what we're basically doing here in these market graphs is we're trying to do a marginal analysis. We're trying to assess how much to sell or how much that demanders want to buy based on one unit at a time. So we don't want to know the overall cost for the whole business. We want to know how much each unit costs for the business to produce. And we don't want to know how much overall the business is going to earn. We want to know how much the business is going to earn for each one unit they sell. And so this is how we analyze uh, companies or, or industries sometimes, is we do an analysis at the margin, a marginal analysis where we analyze one unit at a time. So we, well, what's going to happen if they produce and sell one unit? What if they produce and sell two units? or three units, or four units, we can see the costs and the revenues associated with uh, producing and selling just one quantity at a time, or one unit at a time. And so that is why we are using a coordinate plane with quantity on the horizontal axis and dollars for every one unit on the vertical axis. All right, so what I'm gonna show you in understanding these graphs of market structures is that there are actually five graphs, okay, five curves that we are going to draw on this coordinate plane. And the, the purpose of this, this particular lesson right here uh, is just to basically introduce you to those five curves, to help you understand those five curves and uh, where they are relationally to one another. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to look at a market graph. You should be, well, not market, but a market structure graph. 
you should be able to see these five curves on a coordinate plane and you should be able to say, I know that that is this kind of curve. I know that that is that kind of curve just by their basic shape. And that's why right now I want to explain the names of these five curves. And then as we go through this lesson, I'm going to explain to you their shapes and why they have the shapes that they have. Okay. All right. Now you are familiar with these, uh, not maybe not the curves, not the graphs themselves. You've probably, you've seen the graphs before, but um, you've uh, never seen them together on one graph. Uh, so here's what we're going to describe today. I'm going to explain to you the basic shape of the graph of uh, a demand curve, a demand curve. Now you're probably already okay with the demand curve. We're not going to spend much time on that, but I am going to emphasize something about the demand curve. So one of the curves we care about is the demand curve. Uh, the second curve that we care about a lot is the marginal, the marginal revenue curve. All right, now I want to remind you that a demand curve, we typically indicate the demand curve with the letter D. We typically indicate the marginal revenue curve with an MR, okay? Uh, the third curve we are going to be concerned about is the marginal cost curve, marginal cost, okay? And so that's MC. The fourth curve that we're interested in understanding is the average, move to this side, the average total cost curve, which we're going to call ATC, okay? And then the fifth curve that we're going to be concerned with is the average variable cost curve, average variable cost. And that's AVC. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, uh, why is it that you, we are, why are you not including the average fixed cost curve? Well, I'm, I'm going to show you the average fixed cost curve briefly as I'm explaining the average total cost curve. But um, the average fixed cost curve is not really necessary in uh, assessing the nature of an industry. Uh, what you're going to see later is that the average fixed cost curve is implied. If you have the average variable cost curve and the average total cost curve, the average fixed cost can be seen not as, a, not as an actual curve on the graph, but you can, uh, you can actually see what the average fixed cost is uh, because of the relationship between ATC and AVC, okay? All right, and so let's go ahead and start understanding these five uh, um, economic relationships. All right, let's start with the demand curve. This one should be pretty easy. You're already familiar with the demand curve. We know that the demand curve is a downward sloping curve. I'm going to call that D, okay? Now, there is something that you already know that I want to emphasize because it's important for understanding market structures, and that is this. Well, really two things. The first one is this, is that I want you to remember that there is a negative relationship between quantity and price. For the demand curve, this variable right here, this dollars per quantity, that is price. And so demand is a relationship it is a negative, a negative relationship between quantity and price. It's very important that you remember that because I'm going to bring that up at least a couple times in talking about other things. And I want to remind you that this very simply is the law of demand. Okay? All right. So that's our that's the first curve that I want you to understand. 